the 16th century, the ideas from a man named Martin Luther started the Protestant Reformation in an attempt to reform the Roman Catholic Church. This reformation aspired to restore the spiritual purity of early Christianity before the growth of a clergy and dogmatic theology. These changes in faith eventually led to the creation of new national Protestant churches. In response to Protestant religion spreading, the Roman Catholic churches started a counter-reformation in an attempt to revive old Christianity. Both these reformations led to new and different architecture in the Protestant churches and in the Roman Catholic churches. Within these Protestant churches, the classic evangelical form of church design and architecture began to evolve, which was intended to foster the verbal power of pastoral preaching based on the proclamation of God's word through the reading and interpretation of sacred scripture. Martin Luther didn't like how the Roman Catholic Church was very materialistic. He believed that churches should not be ornate and decorated, but rather focused on the spiritual connection with God. Resulting from these ideas, churches were stripped of ornamentation, imagery, color, and decoration. The absence of these items reflects the impact of liturgical practice on the way people worshipped and how the architectural barriers were brought down. David Gogol, an architectural history teacher at Savannah College of Art and Design, agrees with Luther. He said, I suggest that we approach church architecture in terms of worship and witness, the twin goals of the church. Worship is the purpose of the church. It is what the church does when it gathers. Worship, as we understand it from the teaching of scripture, consists of the reading and preaching of the word, public prayer, congregational singing, and the celebration of the sacraments. It is to done in spirit and in truth, with reverence and awe, and according to scripture. The building in which we worship is the physical setting for this supremely important activity, but it is not to be worshipped itself, nor should it distract us or lead us to worship any created thing. But Charles Borromeo, who published a summary of Catholic traditions regarding church design in 1577, had an opposite view on how churches should be structured. He said, This only has been our principle, that we have shown that the norm and form of building, ornamentation, and ecclesiastical furnishing are precise and in agreement with the thinking of the fathers. Charles emphasized the idea that the sacred could be encountered with these senses, which goes hand in hand with his overall argument that decorations and ornamentations should be present in a church. Although Protestant reformers disagreed with this, many architects who worked for Catholic clients started to work with the intention of integrating all the visual arts to maximize the engagement of people's sensibilities and further connect them with God. These architects started to develop the Baroque style. The Baroque era, which began in late 16th century Italy, was directly linked to the Counter-Reformation. Italian Baroque churches were designed to reflect the mystical ideals of the Catholic Reformation. A precursor to Baroque architecture is St. Peter's Basilica because it includes double columns, layered columns, colossal columns, and broken pediments. Complex architectural plan shapes, often based on the oval and the dynamic opposition and interpenetration of shapes, were favored in Catholic churches to heighten the feeling of motion and sensuality. One often finds the interior surrounded by numerous angles. The ceilings and domes often contained large murals using an art technique involving extremely realistic imagery in order to create the optical illusion that the depicted objects appear in three dimensions. Other characteristics included deliberately incomplete architectural elements, dramatic use of light, opulent use of color and ornaments, and large-scale ceilings. San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane in Rome is one of the finest examples of Baroque architecture. It demonstrates Baroque aesthetic sensibility because of its innovative spatial geometry. The main altar is situated in direct sight line of the main entrance to the church, while the columns of the wall decoration offer rhythmic lines throughout the interior space. Hidden windows are fitted into the base of the dome to incorporate dramatic light. Another example of Baroque architecture is Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. The interior is overwhelming, and to modernize, the abundance of decoration can seem extravagant. No surface is left undecorated. Everywhere you look, you see colorful columns, stucco, marble reliefs, dynamic statues, and vibrant paintings. 
Overall, the Baroque played into the demand for an architecture that was on the one hand more accessible to the emotions, and on the other hand a visible statement of the wealth and power of the church. Although there were many architects who designed Baroque buildings, three stood out in Italy where it all started. First, there was Giacomo Barazzi. He worked with Michelangelo, who deeply influenced his style. He designed St. Peter's Domes and the Church of the Holy Name of Jesus. Second, there is Bernini, who is considered the greatest of all Baroque architects and the creator of Baroque sculpting. Bernini did not build many churches from scratch, rather his efforts were concentrated on pre-existing structures. He designed Palazzo Barberini in St. Peter's Square. And third, there was Francesco Borromini, who happened to be a lifelong rival of Bernini. Borromini developed a distinctive architecture employing manipulations of classical architectural forms, geometrical rationales in his plans, and symbolic meanings in his buildings. He designed St. Carlo alle Quattro Fontane and St. Agnes in Agone. To sum it all up, Protestant churches and Catholic churches both had different ideas on what the main purpose of a church really was during the 16th century, which led them to create two very different types of buildings, one simplistic and spiritual and the other decorated and materialistic.